this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to compile a time lapse using the same method used by many professional time lapse photographers, such as Mark G and Morton Rusted. This method has been used to create some of the most stunning and high quality time lapse videos and provides a flexible way to compile all kinds of time lapses. Bulb ramp sequences, flickery footage, and jittery time lapses can all be fixed using this method. The software I'm going to cover in this video includes Lightroom, LR Time Lapse, After Effects, and Premiere. However, if you don't have all of the software, don't worry as the main points still apply and alternative software tutorials will be linked to. There is also an evaluation version of LR Time Lapse which will process up to 400 images for free. For the time lapse, I'm going to use this bulb ramp time lapse we captured in a previous video tutorial. When starting out with any time lapse project, you should first organize all your images into a single folder with the names of the images counting upwards. Also, delete any images that won't be used in the final time lapse as these can interfere when deflickering, as they generally increase the processing time of the entire time lapse and can cause a multitude of other little issues. The first piece of software I'm going to use is Alla Time Lapse in Lightroom. Lightroom is used to grade and then convert all the raw files into an image sequence which can then be compiled. Although you can grade and sync that grade between multiple images, it is not possible to perform that grade on a start image and the end image and then blend that grade between the sequential images. Alla Time Lapse is used to perform this blending process as well as recognize exposure changes throughout the duration of the time lapse and smooth out these variations. I'm going to start by defining the images which I'll grade later in Lightroom. Navigate to the folder where your time lapse is located. This searches for all the images and creates a preview time lapse on the left hand side. You can see as I scrub through the time lapse, the image being used is shown on the right hand side. Using the graph as a reference, I'm going to set keyframes on each chunk of the time lapse as it changes. For this time lapse, I've divided it into five sections. Depending on the duration of your time lapse, you may need more or less keyframes. Press Save XMP. This saves out sidecar XMP files for every frame of the time lapse and is used to communicate with Lightroom. You can see these files located here. Open Lightroom and import your time lapse and filter the images rated one star. This will reveal the images I just keyframed in LR time lapse. I will now develop these images starting with the first image. I will adjust the sliders until I get a look I'm happy with. To save time, highlight the next image and press sync to copy the grade across. Adjust the grade and repeat this process for the rest of the images. Now I need to get these graded adjustments back into Allah time lapse. By selecting all the images, I'll resave the metadata, which will save the data back to those XMP files. In Alla time lapse, I'll press reload and then I'll press auto transition to blend these grades across the intermediary shots. I'll then click Deflicker, which will remove all exposure jumps and changes. I can now resave the XMP files. Jumping back into Lightroom, I'll reread the metadata. All the images are now graded and deflickered, so I should be ready for export. Alla Time Lapse by default crops the image into a 16 by 9 ratio. If you are wanting to change your crop or reposition it later on in post, simply change the crop back to default and then sync this across all the images. In the export dialog, I will select the output location folder I created earlier. For file naming, I'll set this to custom name and sequence. This is important for the next steps as it allows the compiling software to recognize these images as a sequence. For file settings, you'll want to set this to JPEG if you're only planning to compile these images. However, if you want to make further color or grading adjustments during the compiling phase, you'll want to set this to TIFF. Use a bit depth of 16 bits per component and zip compression to reduce the final file size. This provides an uncompressed image that maintains all of the color information, which is really important for grading later on. sRGB should be used for both TIFF and JPEG sequences, as this is the color space used for web video. For compiling the time lapses into a video, I'm going to use After Effects. However, 
If you are only on the Photography Creative Cloud plan, you can use Photoshop for this step. We have already created a tutorial on how to do this and this will be linked in the description. In After Effects, import your images as a sequence. If you exported your images out of Lightroom as a 16-bit TIFF sequence, you will want to change your project settings. In here, change your colour settings to a bit depth of 16. As JPEG and TIFF image sequences do not contain metadata about their frame rate, we will need to tell After Effects what frame rate to use. Under the Interpret Footage menu, set your desired frame rate. I'm going to use 25 frames per second. Next we need to create a composition. This is similar to a timeline or sequence in Premiere. To create this, drag the image sequence down onto the Create New Composition icon. This creates a timeline which uses the same frame rate and resolution as our original time lapse. However, for the exported video, we want to use a standard video resolution and aspect ratio such as HD or 4K. To do this, under Composition Settings, adjust the resolution to the desired size. HD has a resolution of 1920 by 1080, whilst 4K has a resolution of 3840 by 2160. In the viewer window, you will be able to see that the timeline has been cropped to size, however the image is very zoomed in. The image needs to be scaled down to fit the new composition size, so this is done by going to the Transform drop-down dialog and adjusting the footage size with the scale. With my timelapse ready, I'm going to quickly show you how to solve two common issues, which is stabilization and leveling of the horizon. Although this can be done in Premiere, doing this in After Effects and exporting a video will make playback inside Premiere much smoother. Also, After Effects is a much more powerful toolset for fixing other more complicated issues. For stabilization, under Effects and Presets, I will drop the Warp Stabilizer effect onto the footage. This will analyze the footage and take out any bumps caused by wind or any other external factors, although this time lapse doesn't really need it. The levelness of footage can sometimes change throughout the duration of the time lapse. By adjusting rotation, the levelness of the footage can be adjusted on the first frame. By pressing the stopwatch, this allows for a keyframe to be created. Jumping to the last frame, by scrubbing along the timeline, I can now adjust the rotation of this last frame and a keyframe will automatically be created. With the rotation adjusted, you may need to change the scale of your footage to prevent the edges of it being seen. At this point, it is a good idea to preview your time lapse. By hitting 0 on the numpad, you can see a RAM preview of your time lapse. This time lapse looks all good, so it's time to export. Add this sequence to the render queue. Often the H.264 file format is used, and if you are planning to publish your time lapse directly from After Effects, this will work fine. However, H.264 compresses the video file, and doing this multiple times will degrade your footage. To solve this issue, an intermediate codec is often used. On Mac, a codec called ProRes is used, and on Windows, often a codec called Avid DNX HD is used. Although this does not come pre-installed on Windows, so it needs to be downloaded. A link has been provided in the description. First I'm going to set the export settings under the output module. For format, I will use QuickTime, and under Format Options, if you're on Mac, set this to ProRes 422HQ. As I'm on Windows, I will set the video codec to DNxHR, and I'll set the resolution to DNxHR HQ 8-bit. If you plan to grade the footage inside Premiere, and in say Lumetri, set this to DNxHR HQX 10-bit. This will provide more information for grading later on. Finally set the output location of your time lapse and press render. Now it's time to assemble all your time lapses in Premiere. The previous steps can be repeated until you've compiled all of your time lapses. Set your Premiere project name and directory. Once open, simply select all your time lapses and drag them out onto the timeline. This will automatically generate a sequence with a matching frame rate and resolution containing all of your footage. It is important to note that as you go between programs, your frame rates should always match. Should you get your frame rate wrong even at one step, this can cause stuttery footage. Once you have your video edited, it can be exported. 
By setting the export format to H.264, Premiere provides a set of default export settings for all the different online platforms. For my video, I will be using the YouTube 4K setting. Set the output location and press export. If you made it through this tutorial, congratulations. You should now be a time-lapse compiling master. However, if you got stuck or have any questions about the process, feel free to ask in the comments below. If you want to see more videos on this advanced compiling process, check out our filmmaking guides. These are great examples of compiling real-life time lapses. For more tutorials like this one, and more advanced tutorials, check out our YouTube channel.